Hi guys. <laughs> hey, hi space and shame and disappointment. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Yeah, let me hope that my, my white smile is going to make you guys feel not feel that bad. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Maybe nobody has even noticed that I'm here feeling myself that anybody noticed that I've not been on YouTube. Anywho, welcome back. This is Rita Ozama Okolo of Uzo Stripe. And uh, I don't want to make today's video long, so I'm just going to. Today, I'm not going to be talking too much. I just want to. I want to share a story of my life. So many interesting things have been happening in my life the past couple of weeks. Aside the fact that school wants to strangle me, and so many forces in the postgraduate law faculty of Premier University of London are after my life. Um, aside that, I thank God for everything. We're pushing through, through the essays, through the deadlines, through work, etc. Anyway, let me share what happened to me. Let me share what happened to me the day before yesterday because so many things have been happening really and the Holy Spirit has been teaching me so much from like the various daily happenings in my life. So anybody that is undertaking a postgraduate course in the UK, you guys know how it is. When you come here, you have all these lofty dreams or when you come immediately, you just apply to a law firm or something, something, something. Everybody here, in case you don't know, my name is Jita Ozamakolo. I'm a legal practitioner. I've practiced law for the past five, six years. I was called in 2018 and I've been practicing law ever since. I've mostly been into litigation, but I also, you know, branched into um, human rights law and a little bit of commercial law here and there. Um, so, you know, I'm a lawyer and I've been in active practice for the past couple of years. But you know, now you come to the UK and then there's like so much so much happening that nobody tells you about before you come here nobody tells you that there are no like jobs just sitting down waiting for you nobody tells you how hard you have to work to get like good jobs here no but you know so there are many people that always like say so many things about the uk and um, yeah sponsorship this stuff so when they are talking it's so easy to get carried away you know so many advisors online you see so many pages like that TikTok, instagram let me tell you how to get a cs in 30 days once you are in the uk and then you feel like that's how easy it's just the same way i wrote on my linkedin if you're not following me on linkedin come follow me about how hard it is to get like how hard a master's degree here is nobody seems to talk about it. everybody just says oh it's easy it's easy it's easy and then you come and you're faced with a different reality so i will be your reality check it's not that easy i mean we can do all things through Christ, right? That's the next one. We can do all things through Christ, but it's humanly speaking. It's, you don't just waltz into the place and get a job. So most times, what most people do when they come here is they start with the odd job here and there, like customer service, hospitality, um, you know, just odd jobs here and there, working in stadiums, working in bars, as waitresses, and nanning. So these are the few things you can start with while you get get your footing so that you're not just staying without earning anything you know you're earning something small to at least cater for your bills your groceries and everything while you now start planning to you know gain entry into a, any of the big fours or whatever company or whatever niche or industry it is you want to gain entry into so that is my story i got here september and of course i'm a, I'm a scholar for those who don't know i'm a children's scholar and you want to you 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 don't you want to you don't want to say oh because you're getting stipends from chilling the stipends basically covers your needs but it doesn't really leave much extra especially if you're living in places like london Birmingham, manchester big cities that where rent is like cray cray <laughs> you really need something else to supplement what it is um scholarship body is giving you and that is where these jobs come in right because Another thing is, as long as you're on a 20, international students want 20 hour per week um, work visa and uh, work rights to work uh, permit. So you, you are only allowed to work 20 hours per week. Most companies don't want people that would give them 20 hours per week. Most companies are looking for people that can commit to at least 35 to 40 hours per week. 35, 37, 40, that's usually the range. So if you can't give them that and you can't as an international student because it offends the rules of your visa, right? 
don't try it guys stick to your 20 hours it be hard sometimes but stick to it man don't offend you know the rules if you go to Rome behave like the Romans don't go there and go and be doing your own a lot of people have gotten into big trouble for it so no no company wants obviously to come and now be collecting you at 20 hours per week except like it's a real part-time maybe part-time research role or maybe your university gives a, a job a role that's also part-time then they understand these things but regular jobs nobody most people let me not say nobody but most people do not want um, students or international students because of the 20 hours per week and um, work restriction so when you come here the first thing you're faced with is the fact that jobs are not just hanging around on the streets for you now to my story guys i feel like i've talked too much i've never said the story anyway so like day for yesterday i was going for my job as usual um a hotel had like an event and um it was a law event and you know we we're supposed to wait anyway Asha went for the event that day and you know when you go they assign you to a table so they assigned me to a table and i went to the table and i was checking out making sure all the cutlery everything on the table was okay it was placed properly in the right positions etc and then i see this beautiful black lady sitting down at the table already guests were not yet at the hall so in my mind i knew oh maybe she's an organizer she's part of the organizers of the event so i did not i didn't bother but my brain was saying you know this person you know this person in my brain i'm like no i don't i don't think i know this person and then she stood up as she was standing up i was also going towards where she was sitting to check the cutlery and the plates and everything on that side and my my body was acting on the zone because i'm like i know this face i went i literally in my uniform and i went for the house like i know you i know your face and she's like really um i i i look i look familiar i said yes but i can't remember from where and she's like rita i'm like whoa you know my name please remind me where do i know you from she's like law school i'm like Oh my god now this is not even that much of a big deal right i mean you're meeting your, your law school classmate i don't think we were friends but we were not like enemies we were good we were good i think we we're good acquaintances we say hello hi and then you know she had her friends i had mine but it was just for a second i'm like jesus why am i meeting my classmates in a place where i'm saving i was god First of all, I was I was a bit ashamed and I started to overcompensate, like explain like, oh, this is my 20 hours per week. I'm doing my master's at the Criminal University of London. This on this. So I was explaining to her, I'm doing my master's. She was like, oh, don't worry, that ah, that is something we all we all did it now. Like we all understand how this goes and everything. But tell me why, for the rest of that night, I don't get to my safe. Like every time I'm taking, if I went, I even wanted to, you know how you do it. Now when they come, you break the napkin and everything. I couldn't even when I wanted to break her napkin. Of course. At a point, you know, I told myself, I said, you know what, be the damn best waiter you're going to be this night. You're a waiter for tonight. That's your job for tonight. So do your job well. So I said, okay, no problem. I don't care. Even if my, yeah, my rival from university is here right now, I will do my best as the waiter that I am. So I went around breaking napkins. When I got to her, she was like, oh, don't, don't worry, I'll do it myself. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, Allah. I was like, you know, allow me to do my job, Abby. You know, I kept doing serving, you know, table service, doing everything I was supposed to do. But every time, like when I go to the back, I'm just like, oh. and you could feel this awkwardness. You could feel this awkwardness. She's like, she too, she didn't know how to act. Because I feel like she too, she didn't know whether maybe I was feeling too embarrassed. So she didn't know how to approach the whole thing. And then, of course, she was giving a presentation that day. So it was work. So she was also busy with work. She had her colleagues there as well. So it was just a case of, it was just like an awkward um, interaction all um, generally. Um, I think maybe in her head, she's like, I hope this girl doesn't feel like I'm dissing her. In my own head, I'm like, ah, God of mercy. I hope she doesn't feel like I feel like she feels like. <laughs> so it was just, it was just weird all through. I feel bad. At first, I was feeling really run down. I was feeling really bad. I had to call my friend. And I was like, oh, listen, look at what happened. My friend is like, ah, trust me, I understand. If it was me, I'd have entered the ground. Just imagine now. It's like all those Nigerian movies where you and your friend went to school, then your friend will not be driving with Jeep and come and pack. Then you, maybe you, you are now walking on the road, carrying pure water or something. You get like, it's, of course, it's not quite that 
dire it's not that deep that bad but that was the same thing you know how you feel you feel so witty like what am i doing with my life but then in the midst of feeling bad and everything i felt bad for that night i'm not lying until that service was over and i went home i wasn't getting myself but when i got home before i slept i was thinking about the events of the day and the holy spirit brought something to my attention there are times and there are seasons in fact, the first thing that the Holy Spirit brought to my attention was your worth is not tied to your job. It is not tied to your source of livelihood. Who you are is who I made you to be. So because at first I was like, ah, me a whole lawyer. See now, now, now today we are regret this hospitality work pass. Me, a whole lawyer like me. See my mates working with so-so and so company, coming to do presentation in one of the five-star hotels in, in London, you know. So me, I'm there carrying plates and doing may I help you? Um, what you want? Okay, thank you. Are you alright? Like which kind of nonsense? I was feeling bad. But I go home and do this people reminded me and say, yo, what 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 have I told you about yourself? What have I told you about yourself? I'll make of you what? A great nation. What did he say? You're the righteousness of God. In who? In Christ Jesus. In Proverbs 31, he, had this, he described me in Proverbs 31. Finish, finish. So I'm like, this is who I am. So what, what does it matter what I'm doing at this time? The second thing, it now brings me to my second point. He reminded me and said, there are times and seasons. My sister, remember when you were also in university and you had... And I'm very limited resources to take care of yourself. I had only one uncle who was fending for me and one million other people in the village then. I did. He used to send me money when he could. He didn't used to send. It wasn't regular. Like, you know how you get monthly allowance from your parents? Mine needs to come when it comes. So I had to start a business in school. I had to start selling things for, to people. I started, I started a mini talk shop in my room. Did that devalue who I was? No. I was still a lawyer in the making. I was still a lawyer in the making. I was still studying law. It did not change who I was, whatever. I still graduated. I still became a lawyer. And I'm doing well for myself. And I started doing well for myself, rather. So, it just reminded me again that, would this change who... You're, you're a chilling scholar. You're a very intelligent woman. You're a master's degree holder in a couple of months from a Russell Group school in the UK. And you didn't pay five naira for it. You're, you're amazing. You have a non-profit that has changed lives. You continually inspire people every single day with your with your diligence, with your commitment, with your discipline, with your intelligence. So that's who you are. So it's not because oh right now, this place there there are no jobs like right now, or you can at this particular point get something suit like you know that suits your ego as to what you where you feel like you ought to be. It doesn't mean it's who you are. It's a phase and you're passing through, you're like a surgeon in this hospitality thing. You finish it, you pass, you make your money and go. Plus, there's dignity in labor. Are you trying to say you're bigger than all those that are doing this as their source of livelihood? Because I start asking myself, are you saying, oh, you're too big to do this? You're bigger than those that are doing it as a source of livelihood. You're not because you're doing it. So you're not bigger than them. You know, so I, I had to give myself, if I, I'll, I'll plug one video here when I gave myself a pep talk. Um, that night um, dignity of labor there is dignity in labor guys there is dignity in labor. <laughs> so but i had to give myself a pep talk that night so these are the things the holy spirit just reminded me about and i thought to share for one for any of you that is feeling like for any one of you that feels like, sorry, I'm a master sinner, I shouldn't be making cafes like that. For any one of you that feels like, oh, you're not where you're supposed to be right now. What's the meaning of all this? And yeah, this one, this one, this one. My sister, my brother, don't look at your mates. I mean, you can be inspired by them, but don't look at them from a place of envy or from a place of imposter syndrome. People like me, we, are, we like to do things perfectly. So sometimes you judge yourself by where, what, you, what you're doing or where you are right now. You judge yourself by the 2% of imperfections. You forget the 98% of amazing things that you've done. I had to start reading out my own rule call, madam. See everything you've done in the past few years. If it's easy, make another person run out. I had to ginger myself. If they're not ginger, you ginger yourself. And I went back to the word of God. I said, fat, minus everything you've done. What does the word of God say about you? And 
it helped me to come back to my senses. So uh, while I love it for her that she's doing amazing things, she also started from somewhere. Do you understand? And I don't regret serving her. I don't regret... In fact, she was actually nice all through the night. She didn't make me feel any type of way. Me, I was just all up in my feelings. Feeling inferior for no good reason. Because I'm not. I'm not. So my dears, remember who you are. Remember the child of who you are. If you cannot remember your parents, remember the father, the child of who you are. Remember you're the child of God or Allah or, you know, depending on whatever deity you believe in. Remember who you are. Remember where you're coming from. Remember all you've done to get to where you are. And give yourself a pat on the back, Jerry, because it's not easy. Ah, I beg, this is another story in the book of my life. I had to do this to, to survive at this time. But did I continue doing it? No, I rose. And now I'm here. And now I'm here. And I'm, me, personally, I actually like to build from the ground up. I'm not a stranger to building from the ground up. I have always built from the ground up in my life. For, literally with everything, I build from the ground I've never had things handed down to me. Never. So, be proud. Be dang proud of that. If you're somebody who never had anything handed to you and you had to build things from scratch, it's something to be proud of. No matter where the thing is now, even if it's not that big yet. The fact that you had to build from scratch, and you're making something out of nothing kudos so this video is basically an encouragement sorry i didn't have to say it this long but it's an encouragement to somebody out there don't know they look your mates because a lot of your mates too are nowhere they're supposed to be they're in hospitals they're dead they're sick something is wrong somewhere they are being chased by forces left hand and center you are doing well clap for yourself change yourself but most importantly remember what god has said about you and now i'm going to leave you with that and i'm going to end this video because you don't they know video that i said should not be more than seven minutes now it's i don't know maybe 15 minutes but i hope that this 15 minutes was worth it have an amazing day please don't forget to like subscribe and share my videos with all your friends i love you guys bye